Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 10th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're still watching what is now being labeled Potential Tropical Cyclone 6, and what that means is that this disturbance, formerly known as Invest 94L, is expected to become a tropical storm soon. It is not one yet, but is expected to impact land areas while developing over the next couple of days. So the National Hurricane Center has initiated advisories on this as a storm. And there's also an interesting wave to the west of Africa here, which is very far from land areas, but maybe coming westward. And within several days, we may need to talk about that one as well. But for now, we're going to focus on PTC-6. Here's a close-up loop of the storm. It has now rolled through the Leeward Islands and is now moving into the northeastern Caribbean. And you can see that it has pretty healthy shape on satellite imagery. If you look at the end of the loop here, you'll see this curling structure in toward the center of mid-level rotation. However, if we look at the surface observations, we'll note that the system has passed right by a buoy here, and the pressure there has only fallen to about 1,014 millibars over the last couple of hours. And if we look at the reconnaissance data from the aircraft that's flying in there right now, you'll see that what they've found is you know, strong easterly wind at the surface on the north side, but then you look toward the south where you would expect the center to be, and it's really not showing any westerly winds here. We're not seeing that wrapping around of the airflow on the south side of this. And so this is indicating that this is still an open wave axis, despite this appearance on satellite imagery, which would normally be a healthy look. There's not a lot under the hood here, if you will. And this is a common problem for tropical waves in this part of the world. They often look better than they actually are. So for the moment, this is an open wave, not a closed circulation. Maximum winds are about 35 miles per hour or 40 miles per hour or around there. So if it does acquire closed circulation, it will likely be a tropical storm. And what that means is that the weather impacts for these islands here are essentially no different uh, whether or not this is officially classified as a tropical storm. This effectively is a tropical storm impact for these islands here. Heavy rains though are the primary concern, not a huge wind event here, but heavy rain in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and eventually Hispaniola is going to be the, the, the primary impact going forward. Now, if we look at the water vapor satellite loop here, this is a big view showing PTC-6 here in the Northeastern Caribbean, and then here's Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, Florida, and the Bahamas. And all of these areas could see eventual impacts from the system as it tracks generally in this direction over the next few days. And at the moment, it looks like this is going to interact pretty closely with either Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic. Both of these islands have high terrain, but especially Hispaniola, known for ripping apart systems that track over the island. And this will likely be a case where uh, this system will have to get past Hispaniola in order to have any significant chances. If it's not already developing, which clearly this morning it is not doing much yet, it's going to have trouble until it can get past this island here. Now, one thing to note as well on this loop is the presence of a strong upper-level trough over the western Bahamas that is currently backing westward over time. This is eventually going to impart some wind shear on the storm as it moves closer to that trough over the next few days. And the other thing the storm is still dealing with is all this dry air on the western side. You can see that in darker colors here. That seems to be the likely culprit for why PTC-6 is struggling to strengthen over the last couple of days. And we talked about this in the last video being the primary impediment for the storm, and that seems to be bearing out. Uh, it's also wrapping around the southern side here too. Worth noting that even though this is a lighter gray color, there is a lot more dry air here than meets the eye. And I can show you that on the GFS. If you just uh, do a little bit of an area average sounding on the south side of the storm, you'll see that there's a very strong dry layer between about 500 and 700 millibars lower atmosphere the column is saturated above that, which is why the water vapor loop is lighter, uh, milky color here, which would normally indicate moisture. But in this particular case, that's a little bit misleading. And there is, in fact, a lot of dry air underneath that getting wrapped into the southern side of the system. And we can kind of see that having an impact on the convection, where all of this uh, textured cloud cover here is kind of bubbling, but it's not very well structured. All of these thunderstorms are going up and then immediately coming down as downdrafts due to that dry air wrapping in around the south side. And this is currently preventing significant pressure falls in organization. 
So going forward, what is all this going to mean? Well, if we look at the GFS forecast here for the mid-level moisture, we'll see the storm in the Northeast Caribbean. We'll see the dry air wrapping in, and that will continue for some time. And then again, land interaction will be uh, coming into the picture. So the storm may still become a tropical depression or tropical storm officially if the circulation can close off over the next 24 hours as it passes close to Puerto Rico. Whether or not this happens won't mean very much for the impacts to Puerto Rico and the surrounding islands. Uh, but as this moves forward, it'll likely interact with Hispaniola. And at this point, a couple of things start to happen. You'll see that the surface trough is about here on the GFS, and the deep moisture field is kind of offset to the east. And that's because of that upper level low that we just showed you in the water vapor loop, bringing southwesterly flow around its southern side, starting to impart some southwesterly shear here. So the surface wave axis may end up kind of to the west of most of the moisture. Now as we go forward, this is going to continue generally west-northwestward, and if we look at the general steering pattern on the GFS Ensemble mean for Thursday morning, the storm's going to be somewhere around here, just leaving the Hispaniola area. There's a big ridge to the north over the western Atlantic, and this is bringing easterly steering flow that is going to force this to continue west-northwestward, putting it in the general vicinity of the western Bahamas, Cuba, and south Florida within a few days. Now the key evolution here is going to be that upper low we just mentioned, and if we look at it aloft, we'll see that by Thursday morning, again if the storm is here, we can see that westerly flow on the south side of this upper low. But this upper low has been sitting there already for a while, again you can see it in water vapor imagery, and it's going to be there for the next three to four days. Upper lows that sit around for a while tend to weaken gradually over time, so as we move forward in this forecast on the GFS Ensemble mean, we'll see that by Saturday, this upper trough is still in the Florida area, but now that it's been there for a few days, it's much weaker. And so as PTC6 begins to move into this area on most model forecasts, the shear is likely to start weakening over time. And so as this gets toward the Cuba, Western Bahamas, and Florida area, environmental conditions are likely to gradually get more favorable. And we could see uh, some redevelopment, even if the wave struggles after passing over Hispaniola, we could get some potential redevelopment or re-strengthening in this area here. And we can look at the ensemble to follow the possible tracks and strengths of the storm as it moves north of Hispaniola. This is a plot that shows you in red numbers uh, the location of the storm in each of 30 ensemble members in the GFS, so it gives us a nice cluster of possible futures for the system. You can see by Thursday morning it has moved north of Haiti, and as you go forward in the forecast, you'll see that a swath of possible locations starts to move into the Florida Straits area and the Western Bahamas, and some of these are stronger than others. Some of them are still quite weak here with pressures above 1,010 millibars, and so there's a range of possibilities here given how organized the system may or may not be after interacting with the terrain of Hispaniola. And as you go forward, you'll see that some of these move into the Florida Peninsula as strengthening tropical storms, and some of them remain weak and move out into the Gulf of Mexico. Again, this will depend on whether it is organized in any way coming off of Hispaniola. If we happen to have some sort of organized surface trough pass just north of the island and avoid passing over the mountains, we could see a more organized storm coming into the to this area here, but if it passes right over Hispaniola, it may take a while for anything organized, if ever, to pop out in this region. So it's going to depend a lot on the evolution over the next day or so. If we take a look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, we'll see by Wednesday evening it's near the northern coast of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. We've got tropical storm warnings out for Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the eastern part of Hispaniola, again, these will be tropical storm-like impacts regardless of when NHC officially gives this a name. And heavy rain's the primary concern here. There will be winds of 35 to 40 miles per hour given what the plane is currently measuring in the storm. Uh, but the high terrain here means flash flooding uh, and mudslides, big concern with, with any tropical system coming through, even if it's weak uh, in terms of wind. And then again, continuing along the northern coastline of the Big Islands here is kind of the expectation. Models are in good agreement, and the National Hurricane Center forecast follows suit, just as we showed you on the GFS a little bit ago. And then continuing west-northwestward due to that big ridge to the north, which unfortunately means this will continue impacting land if the storm survives, and we'll have to be talking about impacts potentially to Florida, 
by the time we get to the weekend. Now at the moment, uh, the good news for Florida and the Bahamas is that as the system interacts with the tall mountains of these islands over the next few days, if we do still have a storm that is surviving by the time it gets to this point, it will likely be starting from the ground floor in the sense that it's not likely to be very strong when it gets to this area. So if it does begin re-strengthening, which NHC does forecast here, showing a strengthening tropical storm during this period, it will likely take a while to get to any kind of strength that is really threatening wind-wise. But at the moment, there is a forecast for this to have 60 mile per hour winds and growing by the time we get to Sunday morning. A lot of that will depend on the exact details of how much time this spends over land. If we happen to see it go farther south over Cuba, this will be a much weaker system. If we happen to see it sneak more north of the islands for longer, it'll have more water time and it'll be a stronger system. So we have practice with this. We know that interaction with these islands means there's a lot of sensitivity in the forecast. So the best thing you can do is make sure you have your hurricane plan ready, dust it off, make sure you have a plan of action in case threatening weather comes your way later this weekend. As of right now, it doesn't look like a really strong hurricane threat is expected anytime soon in this region. It's kind of a weak storm with flash flooding and rainfall being the primary concerns at this time. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.